It's a beautiful day in my record room. A wonderful day in my record room. Could you be mine? Would you be mine? It's a music-filled day in my record room. Just sit right back and listen to that bass boom. Could you be mine? Won't you be mine? I've always wanted a subscriber just like you. I've always wanted to sit and talk with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Let's sit right back and I'd like to say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Would you be my subscriber? Could you be? Would you be? Won't you be my subscriber? Hello, subscribers. It's a special edition midweek video. This deals with that thread. Richard McCormick started this, I don't know, maybe a month ago, and a lot of other people have jumped in. About 45. Show 45. Show 30 45s. And, you know, I've, I've been listening to the different ones, and I was watching James Griffiths because I won't miss one of his. And I said, you know, that's, that's kind of neat. And James does what he always does. He kind of says, well, then you just should do it. You need to do it. Uh, He's, he's the guy that gives me a lot of peer pressure out there. So I thought it would be fun. Personally, I don't do a lot of 45s. But when I was young, I did. And once I got buying records, people gave me a whole bunch of 45s. But I'm just going to show you the ones I bought when I was young. 1973 was a pivotal year for me. I became a teenager. I turned 13 in 1973. It was the year also I switched using my paper out money. I switched from buying baseball cards to buying music. That's when I began to buy 45s. It was in 1973. And for two years, really, I bought 45s. Then I got into Columbia Record Club. And from then on, I bought albums after that. Now, you know, what I could buy just depends on the money I made. You know, I didn't get an allowance, so you had to work. And I had a paper out. I made, had a lawn mowing business, a snow shoveling business. And I was really good at finding ways just to get money out of people. Not by extortion, not by beating them up. Always get a service, but I was really good at anything for a buck. <laughs> I don't think all the parents were really happy with me at times, but hey. You had to buy stuff to buy baseball cards and music. So let's go through. Here's the stack. And these are my 45s. I think there's 30 of them there. And it would be like from 1973, probably to 75. So we'll begin here. The very first one I ever bought. Spiders and Snakes by Jim Stafford. Funny thing about this. And, you know, when I went to buy um, 45s, there was just a small, small little stores where I lived. It was a small town. There was a clothing store that had a little box of 45s. Then the Five and Dime had some 45s. Nobody had albums. So I'm in there and I'm agonizing over buying this or Steve Miller Band's The Joker. Which one should I get? Which one should I get? God, which one's the best? I went with Spiders and Snakes. Now I go, God, that sucked. I should have bought the Joker. But that's kind of how my life goes. I really think I got the right thing going. And then later on, I go, maybe that wasn't right. But spiders and snakes. Uh, one of the very first ones also was, this is Beach Baby from First Class. I, uh, that was when my older brother got a radio. And a clock radio it was the very first song I heard off the clock radio the day after Christmas, uh, and it was uh, it was no that no that that was hooked, that was Blue Sweet hooked on a feeling. This came a little later, but I love this. This had such a great kind of a Beach Boys vibe to it. Awesome forty five. Here we go. Uh, this was from Reunion. Life, life is a rock, but the radio rolled me. Life is a rock, but the radio rolled me. The, the radio station had this contest. Can you name every group they mention in us? I mean, lightning fast. They throw out all these groups. And I spent so many freaking hours playing it again and again, trying to get the groups. I never did get it right. Never, never, never did. There's so many of them, but fun thing. 
Here was a good one. This came from Sugarloaf. Don't call us, we'll call you. Don't call us, we'll call you. I got five, five I, I bought that in LP. That was fun. Oh, talk about a classic here. Um, Terry Jack, Seasons in the Sun. Because we had joy, we had fun, we had seasons in the sun. I memorized this. I mean, I knew every single word of this. And there isn't too many things, too many songs that I can remember all the words to. But this was one. It was quite the 45 for me. Another one of those um, fun ones. Oh, yes, they call them the streak. <whistles> look at that, look at that. Uh, Ray Stevens and the streak. Man, that thing was hot when everyone was running around naked. Uh, notice I have these because of my record player. I had to have a whole bunch of those to put them on. You know, you'd stack them up. You know, like 10, 45, so they could go plop down on top of each other. Pretty nice stuff. But, ah, uh, oh, yes, they call them the streak. I memorized every lyric on that song, too. Uh, here's, here's, here's another one of those kind. C.W. McCall Convoy. Those in Europe, you might not know that one. Maybe you do. We got a great big convoy trucking through the night. I memorized all those songs too. Yes, that's the amazing thing about these 45s. You know, I had no album, so I just would go and I'd buy the 45s. I think they were 99 cents. And you'd sit and play and play and memorize every lyric of it. I even made my own like radio broadcasts, own commercials. I've used my 45s. Yeah, I know. It's just the way it was. Music was everything. Fun one here. There we go from Apple. Paul McCartney's Band on the Run. Oh my goodness, that was fun. I mean, I absolutely, to this day, I still love this one. Uh, one of my all-time favorite McCartney songs from 1973. You see, most of these, I don't have a lot of picture sleeves. These didn't come that way, but this one did. Low Rider. Isn't that nice? Love that song, Low Riders. To this day, it's still one of the coolest songs to drive to. How about that one? Grand Funk, Locomotion. I thought they made that song. Heck, if I knew someone made it in the 60s, everybody's doing a brand new dance now. For those of you that really like to rock hard with Grand Funk, this song probably sucked, but I loved it. Okay, here we go. That's a Bachman Turner Overdrive. Roll on down the highway. I love Bachman Turner Overdrive. It was one of the very first albums I ever bought. Not Fragile. Uh, and there was the single from it. The Orleans. Dance with me. Come on and be my partner. Can't you see? The music is just starting. Great stuff. Ah. Okay, Paper Lace, The Night Chicago Die, na 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 You know, on my paper route, I, I, I love music so much. I bought a little, you know, you could, back in those days you had little transistor radios, you know, handheld transistor radios. I had one, I secured it to my handlebar on my bicycle so I could have the music playing. And there are certain songs, I mean, I remember exactly where I was at. When when um, the stories did, Louie, you know, Louie, 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 Louie. I was one block down from my house, second house on the right-hand side, delivering the paper when that song came out. It blew me away. Uh, here we go, little, I did not know there was such thing as glam rock back then. Fox on the Run, sweet. Man, I played that thing a lot. Now I find out that's called Glam Rock. I just called it a cool 45. And we have, here's a, one of those, um, Mr. Jaws by Dickie Goodman. So the movie Jaws came out. So always when a good movie came out, someone had to make a song about it. Uh, I have one on Muhammad Ali, but this was on the Jaws. So they're interviewing um, Jaws up. Uh, just a novelty hit, kind of fun. And then what do we got here? Okay, 
that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, a little KC and the Sunshine Band. Isn't it great that I'm singing all these to you? Uh, I bought the album shortly after I got this 45, but oh, man, I had to have this one. Uh, this is actually 76. I ah, still bought some 75s some and 76. The Wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Because the legend lives on from the Chippewa on down to the Big Lick. Of the big lake they call Gitchagoo. Lake Superior is a big lake. It's freezing cold, super deep, and you're crazy to go on it during the winter. I uh, and now kind of an odd one I bought, but I really like this. Freddie Fender, wasted days and wasted nights. Great stuff. I don't know if you can hear the background. I don't know how loud it is, but that's Louie Louie. Oh god, I still love that one. Ah, dancing, dancing, dancing. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. The Jackson 5. She's a dancing machine. Whoop, da, wah. God, that thing had a funky beat, didn't it? And my introduction to Elton John. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. I found out later the Beatles did that song. Here I thought Elton John just did it. This one kept skipping. I had, I think I got three different ones and it finally occurred to me that my stereo sucked. It was just a small thing. You know, I was just a kid, but that was a great one. Three Dog Night. I liked Three Dog Night because they did joy to the world. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. But um, I bought this one. The Show Must Go On by Three Dog Night. And then, ch 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 jive talking da 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 I'm sorry, I don't know all the lyrics to that one, but that was fun stuff. My first Bee Gees. That was huge. And we have, have you ever been mellow? Have you ever tried? See, I did buy female artists. There we go. That's a female artist. I really like that one. I was not a big Olivia Newton-John fan, but man, that was a nice one. I must have, there must have been a girl I was pining for at the time. Because I can't see any other reason why I would have bought that. So obviously, there are some chick involved with this and electric light orchestra and evil woman evil woman ba -da -ba 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 -ba. another picture sleeve this is from chicago harry truman because we need you harry truman talk about kind of a weird 45 huh who makes one about a president who makes one about harry truman well, obviously Chicago did, uh, because um, they just felt we needed them. It probably came out around the time. Nah, Nixon was already gone. Gerald Ford was around. Obviously, they still felt Harry Truman was much better than Gerald Ford. So, And, oh, 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 it's magic, you know, pilot. Uh, really big during the summer. What year was this one? Some of these have years. Some of these do not have years. 1974. That thing was all over the place. It was really popular. And, oh, yes, wait a minute, Mr. Postman. By the Carpenters. Then you learn, hey, someone else did this song before they did. But isn't that nice little picture sleeve? Wow, I had a Carpenter 45. How about that? And then they did this masquerade on the other side, which actually I liked a lot. And I actually had two suites because if you have Fox on the Run, you have Ready, Steve? Uh-huh. Eddie? All right. Yes. Come on, fellas. Let's go. Ballroom Blitz. <laughs> this was another one of those just rocking songs. Find out. It's glam. I had no idea those guys looked down kind of as odd as they did, but what a great 45. And during all this time as I was buying 45s, disco was creeping in. And in 1975, you had to do the hustle. I, how old was I? I was about 15 years old. I was doing absolutely zero hustle whatsoever, but I found it to be a quite catchy tune. Being a good Swede.
what else could you do? But when this came out, SOS by ABBA. Still a lifelong ABBA fan, but don't you hear me, darling? Don't you hear the SOS? You know, the rest of that, I believe the album this came off kind of sucked, but man, this was such a good one. And then, I know you're going, wow, you can just listen to some different stuff. Ready for this one? I have Barry Manilow. I write the songs that make the whole world sing. I write the songs of love and special things. I'm sure I'm singing it wrong. That's okay. It's Barry Manilow. He doesn't mind. But there we go. I write the songs. The final one I have is Helen Reddy. It was all AM radio, folks. Nothing about, notice, there's no kind of FM stuff. There's no Hendrix, there's no Steely Dan, there's no Black Sabbath, or Zeppelin. All those didn't put out 45s anyway. I only had AM radio, I knew nothing about FM. It was AM and that was it. So Helen Reddy, Angie Baby. This was kind of a creepy, really creepy, scary kind of song. If you've never listened to the the lyrics of Angie Baby. Kind of sad. You go, God, that gal, is she just psychotic or super weird? I don't know. So there we go. That's 30 45s. There might even be 31 then, and we'll count that as a bonus 45 for you. Uh, yeah, I, I, to this day, I will still buy some, but they're more kind of like a third man record. Coal Mine 45, or one comes in free. Uh, it's a collectible thing. I get some 45s that way, but it's nothing that I really buy a lot of because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just too damn lazy to want to get up out of my seat and flip over a record after only three minutes. That's the way it is. So, my co-host here, my co-host, Cat. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Uh, look how happy he looks. Isn't it funny about cats? They always have the same stupid look. They just look like... I don't care. I don't give a crap about you, but right, right, kitty, kitty, right. Okay. Um, thanks for joining us today. I uh, really appreciate it. And now my nice suit is all full of freaking cat hair. Damn it. Oh, well, that's, it's not your worry. It's my worry, right? All right, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.